energy and there's kinds of anger in, uh, on the ground in Pennsylvania and people are very committed and strong, uh, uh, Trump is going to be strong and, and that's we, we have to respect that. Did John Fetterman just predict that Trump is going to win his home state of Pennsylvania? I'm Vince for RTM News and no, we are not making this up. Take a listen to Senator Fetterman in his own words. I think if you match up Trump and Harris, which I think that's really what that this is really about. And I do believe he's going to win Pennsylvania. And of course, it's going to be close. But I've been maintaining that whether it's Biden, whether it was Clinton or whether now it's with Vice President Harris, it's going to be very close. What? Folks, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new for that. But what a shocking admission. And here's the thing about John Fetterman is a lot of people think he's on some type of character arc where he's going to turn into a Republican. I don't necessarily know if that's true, but I will tell you this. John Fetterman is the one Democrat in the party that's willing to kind of give his own side a reality check here and there. And I think the reality check, if I were to guess that John Fetterman sees is that when you drown out all of the noise and the hype around Kamala Harris, fundamentally, she does not relate to the people of the Rust Belt, especially in those rural areas of Pennsylvania and the white working class that Donald Trump enjoys such a significant advantage with. And let's listen to Fetterman at this recent conference with The Atlantic, where he explains in detail why he again believes it's actually going to be Trump who wins Pennsylvania. And with that, likely the election at the end of the day. Two attempted assassinations, one where a bullet actually actually hit him. And at, the, at this point, uh, and I also want people to understand, you know, and it's not science, but there is, a, there is energy and there's kinds of anger in, uh, on the ground in Pennsylvania. And people are very committed and strong. Uh, uh, Trump is going to be strong. And, and that's, we, we have to respect that. You don't, can't even understand it. And it's not like a science that can explain it. But, but you have to just know that it's real. You are something of an outlier in your party, not only because of some of the positions you've taken on the Israel-Gaza conflict. You're an outlier because, um, and you'll tell me if I'm wrong, uh, you see the party as going too woke in a kind of way, that you see the party drifting from working class people and working class concerns. Is that fair? I think that's totally fair. And I think this is what John Fetterman sees is while the coastal elite and their culture of nonsense that I'm sure you're all familiar with dominates the Democrat party, he's looking at the electoral map. He's looking at the fact that, hey, we have to win Pennsylvania and we can't just rely on Philadelphia alone, although that's a core part of our strength in that state. We have to do a little bit of margins in Scranton, where, you know, Joe Biden is from or in Butler or in places like this. And John Fetterman, a big reason he managed to beat Dr. Oz is he did that a little bit, right? He kind of reached out a little bit to the rural areas, to the working class and did just enough to be able to win. I think he's looking especially at Kamala Harris and saying she has no relatability to industrial workers, to the white working class, etc. And no amount of word salads can really save her in that regard but that said let's listen to what he has to say about this no, no I, I i don't judge anyone in my in my party what their views are and what their uh, i'm not going to show up in someone's district or in their state saying you're wrong you got to agree with me or anything you know my statement is the the statements and and the kinds of positions that i have i you know i make a, a statement about israel the situation on gaza but yesterday I was the, the chair of the subcommittee talking about, hey, let's make school lunch free. I mean, that's, that's pretty democratic. I mean, like, so I haven't voted against our, I would call traditional kinds of democratic values, whether that's the union way of life or whether that's LGBTQ or talking about other things. But, um, and I've never been offended or outraged by somebody other views that are different than mine. And I've never tried to convince anyone that I happen to think if I'm on the right side. What would you say to Kamala Harris and the other leaders of your party if you want to win back the support of white, high school educated Pennsylvanians uh, who you've pretty severely lost over the last number of years? 
what would the strategy be that you would recommend? Not only I mean, the simple answer, first of all, is to stop demonizing them, which even in the white dudes for Harris campaign call, they immediately start off by apologizing for racism and the misogyny and structural patriarchy and all this nonsense. You know, that type of stuff, a newsflash doesn't really go well with uh, white working class men, especially. OK, just a little idea. But let's hear what he has to say. Well, I'm, I'm curious. 45, 50 days, but onward. Uh, no, I, I have a running joke, and, but it's, uh, I, I genuinely I don't give people advice, and then I say, except in fashion. And, and, <laughs> and, and then that it, it's like, I, I'm not going to sit down with, with a sitting vice president and tell her or say, hey, no, no, you better, or hey, I'm telling you. Or it's, like, it's like, I'm certainly not going to mansplain the, the vice president, and she's perfectly capable, <laughs> and she's incredibly successful, and she's, I mean... She smoked. She she smoked him uh, in the debate, and and I know I trust her instincts, and she's got a great team surrounded by her, and she is uh, an incredibly uh, she's an amazing candidate overall. But I would also remind you that uh, Secretary Clinton was fantastic, perhaps the most supremely uh, accomplished kinds of candidate that I can ever remember, and see what happens. And and Trump has created a special kind of a hold within the corn and he's remade the the party and he has a special kind of place in pennsylvania and i think that only deepened uh after that first assassination attempt um let me just so what that really means is he doesn't really have actual advice and you know what maybe that is a good sign for the trump campaign because the advice of john fetterman who actually kind of understands the electoral politics here that advice actually being given to kamala harris could potentially be a little bit dangerous that said i still don't believe honestly that kamala would even have the capability to relate to these kinds of voters but folks that is ultimately the truth this is a core reason and why the Kamala Harris campaign reportedly sees their internal polls and knows they are not nearly as good or as strong as the public ones are saying and why there is still very serious concern on their part over the state of Pennsylvania, which again will likely decide the election is because when you drown out the noise, the hype, oh, the debate, Trump said this, it comes down in many ways to turnout and to demographics. And when you remember the fact that winning the state of Pennsylvania is not all just about winning over minorities or the Democrat base, but you actually somehow have to stop the bleeding with white working class voters. And Kamala Harris, as John Fetterman is pointing out here, has little capability to do that. That, then you may be a party that is fundamentally in trouble in that part of the country. Forget the popular vote, forget how California or New York votes. If the Rust Belt does not find her relatable, which we have seen so far, it does not seem like is the case, then she could be in for a rude awakening in November. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. And until next time, I've been Vince with RTM News. Peace.